And some of y'all brushed your teeth and combed your hair. Put on blue t-shirts and match my blue socks. He matches me. There we go. Wow, are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Amen. We're going to start a new series. And uh, I would like to entitle this series for this month, Are We There Yet? Why don't you say that? Are We There Yet? How many have kids? Put a hand up if you've got kids. How many have ever taken a kid, taken a trip with kids in the backseat of the car? How many have ever been asked the question, are we there yet? Amen. How many realize that we are all on a journey? We're all on the highway of life. We're all going to heaven someday. We are on our way. Amen. Amen. In fact, we're not just on a journey to heaven. We're on a journey to specific heavens. We're on a journey to something transpiring in our life. Something uh, coming about. Something taking place. And a lot of times on the journey, we get discouraged. We get behind. Uh, we get down behind the process that it takes of getting to where we're going. Have we got anybody in the room as a witness? Yeah. And we assess and we ask, Lord, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And so uh, that's why I want to take some time this month to camp around this stall. Uh, if you have your Bibles, you can turn in on the Joshua chapter 4. And it's a good day to take notes, I think, uh, if you would like to. It might help you. So in this first installment of... Well, let me say this before I go there, while you're turning. We are, we are embarking upon a journey on the outside of our building. We're going to transform the outside, we're transform the inside, and we're going to do something on the outside. Did you see the picture or addition when you came in? Um, we're going to do that to the outside and cause our community to know this is not the Leonardo sales building anymore. This is a church. Amen. It's where we meet to worship the Lord. Amen. And so I believe in doing everything right and doing everything with excellence and doing our best because it's not for us. It's not, I'm not even doing what I'm doing for you as much as I would. I think you're worth it. I do what I do for Him. Amen. And I hope that what you do, you do it for Him. And I hope that if you work a job and you pull 40 hours or someplace, that if you don't sit up on your job halfway doing it Amen. because you're just doing it for a paycheck. I hope that you realize that everything that you do, God says to do it unto the Lord. Amen. And so we're going to do this unto the Lord. And I'm asking you, and I'm going to ask you again, yes, forgive me for just a moment for doing family business, but I need to say this over the next few weeks. I'm asking all of you that will to consider uh, a pledge, a vow towards our building and our, uh, our upgrade on our building. I asked you last week if you'll pray about it. I'm asking you this week. I'm not asking for anything today. I'm not even asking that you make the vow today or the pledge. I'm just asking you to consider it and think about it and let God use you. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. Visitors, thank you for uh, allowing me to take care of that today. I think it's, uh, if this, everybody say that this, this is their church, I want you to say this. Say, this is my church. I'm responsible for my church. When I say this is my church, I'm not talking about this is only mine and not yours. I'm talking about this is mine and this is yours and we need to take care of it. Amen? Amen. All right, so back to what we're talking. Everybody say, are we there yet? Say it again, are we there yet? The first installment of are we there yet is going to be this. Take a look back. This is the first installment. Now, I'm, I'm asking you if you're there yet, and we know if you're going to get somewhere, you've got to keep your eyes on the road. Amen? Amen. But every once in a while, you've got to take a look back. And this is, uh, this is number one. If you have your Bibles, turn to Joshua chapter 4. We're going to begin reading in verse 1. You can stand for the reading of the word if you want to. You don't have to. Some like to. Verse 1 says, And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe of man, and command ye them, saying, Take ye hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's priest feet stood firm, twelve stones, and you shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where you shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe of man. And Joshua said, 
Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan and take you up, every man of you, a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What do these stones mean? Then you'll answer them, saying, The waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, where it passed over Jordan. And the waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. If you can, skip on down to verse 20. It says, And those twelve stones which they took out of Jordan did Joshua pitch in Gilgal. And he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What do these stones mean? Then you'll let your children know. Everybody say, let your children know. Amen. Saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land. The Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you until you were passed over as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up from before us until we had gone over. That all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, and that you might fear the Lord your God forever. Father, I ask for illumination and impartation of your word today, Lord. Let it be manna unto our soul, God. Let it be bread of life for us today, Lord. Let this not be a dead letter. Let it not be rope mechanic. Let it not just be a time that we just came to church because we needed something to do on Sunday. But Lord, Lord, I pray right now that you would begin to change hearts, change minds, and change lives. I pray, God, that you would change paths. And as we take the time to look back today, I pray, God, that there would be joy in the look back and remembrance that you have been a good God all the days of our life. And you're not about to change because you're God and you change not. And so I'm asking, Lord, for this illumination over your people. Enlighten them as you lighten them. And God will give you glory and praise and honor for these things being done in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Let all of the saints say a big old. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Put your Bibles in your lap just one more time. And just one more time. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. If you have to, you know it. <laughs> Amen. I may stretch a little, some of y'all out a little bit. You know, it's all right to say amen in the house of the Lord. I like talk back. I like sass. Amen. All right? I like y'all to turn to one another and say, you know he's talking to you. Amen. You told me that yesterday. Amen. All right? I like it when you look over your glasses and say, I think the Lord is trying to tell you something. Amen. 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 Let's have a good time in the house of the Lord. Amen. And let's receive something from God. Amen. Now, I think most of you all probably here know the story about how the Lord, by mighty acts, brought the children of Israel out of bondage in the land of Egypt. And they crossed over the Red Sea when the Lord rolled the Red Sea back. And they crossed over on dry ground. And as soon as they hit the bank of the other side, the armies that had followed them over to bring them back into bondage, God drowned in the Red Sea. God took care of their enemies. If I hold my peace, and let the Lord fight my battle. Amen. Victory, victory shall be mine. Amen. And so then they, again, once again, they wander in the wilderness for 40 years because they were disobedient for a while. And then there comes a time when it's just their time to go on into their land. And there is a promised land for each and every one of us. And it's not just high in the sky by and by. Amen. Your promised land means something to you that your neighbor's promised land doesn't mean. We all have a promised land. We all have a promise. We all have a destination. We all have something good that God wants to do. In us, for us, through us, as us. How many believe us? <laughs> I believe us today. So the crossing of the Jordan River is symbolic of them getting to the place where God is designed and destined for them to go. And so they get to the place and God has to do the same thing that He does to the Red Sea. Rolls back, he rolls back the waters of the Jordan. And they cross over. Now, I don't have time to go into this. I can talk about how it went all the way back to the city of Adam, all the way back to the beginning. God will roll your past all the way back to the place where you messed up how to believe. But I'm not going to get on that. I can, I can stay right there for a little while, but I want to move on past that. So they cross on over into the land that God has for them. And they're so excited. And the Lord tells Joshua. Get one man from each of the twelve tribes of Israel and have them pick up a stone 
from the riverbed and bring it over to the other side. And these are to stand for memorials. And this is the story. And this is what I want you to get out of this. That when you take a look back, there's four things to remember. Look at your neighbor and say, there's four things to remember when you're looking back. How many like to take a look back every once in a while? Amen. There's four things to remember when you do. Number one, the first thing that you remember is you remember the good and you remember the God. That's number one. Everybody say, remember the good? And just drop out an O and say, remember God. And it says, when the children ask, and I love that we're doing this on baby dedication day, because there's going to be a time when you're going to tell baby Adeline what we did in this place. And when the inevitable struggles arise in her life, you can remember back to September, what is today, 6th, 5th, 6th, 9, 6, 15, we dedicated this baby to the Lord, and she already belongs to you whether she acts like it or not. Tammy's going to, that's probably Trey's going to be saying, you just go right back on in that bedroom and take the short shorts and that hawk top off because on September 6th, 2015, we dedicated you to the Lord. <laughs> we don't talk like that anymore, do we? <laughs> but that's not baby out of She won't do that. I'd tell my daughter to go change the other day. She's 21. She's not here, so I can Remember the good, remember the God. So when the children ask, these stones remind us that God rolled back the waters and let us in. These stones remind us that God rolled back the Red Sea and brought us out of bondage. These stones remind us that God has been good to us. And some of us don't feel like it all the time. And some of us know that there's been trouble that has transpired in our life. And we don't understand and recognize the goodness of God. If it weren't for the goodness of God, you wouldn't be sitting here in the house of the Lord holding your right arm. You would have lost your arm when you went here. God has been good. He is a good God. And I love the picture of Genesis when it said He created everything that is. And when he got done, he said, hmm, this is good. Yeah. It wasn't like God was bragging. It was just like he was recognizing what he did. Amen. Because God is good. Amen. You can't do something without it being good. Amen. So remember what God did for you. Remember the victories. Remember when God caused that mortgage to go through. Remember when the Lord put a roof over your head. Yeah. Remember when you had to go through the couch to find change to ride the bus. Amen. Remember. I'm only talking about myself today, but I know you've got some things that you know God and only God did for you. And when you take a look back, take a look back at what God did. When you look over your shoulder, look what God did for you. Look what the Lord has done. Are you saved here today? You got a few miles on you. My God, we all got a few miles on us. But what has God done for you? We sang a song growing up. You can't tell it like I tell it what he's done for me. What the Lord has done for me. He has wrought and worked miracles for me. And if the people of God would stop complaining about what's going on in society and start talking about what God did for them, somebody might be drawn to the people of God. That was pretty hard, wasn't it? Amen. 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 Look and testify. Testify. You overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Look back and see what God has done. He has rolled back the Red Sea in your life. He has rolled back your Jordan. He has allowed you entrance into the kingdom of God. He has written your name in the Lamb's book of life. You've got a mansion over the hilltop. You've got somebody that loves you. How many are glad about it today? How many have ever felt unloved? You felt unplugged. You felt like, you know, there wasn't... And God brought you to a wonderful place in your life right now. Remember what He's done. And it could be that you need God to do something for you today. Take a look back at things that He's done before. But let it be an example that if He did it that time, He'll do it this time. Are you, aren't you glad God doesn't walk off the job? Amen. The same God that brought you is the same God that brought you. It's the same God that brought you. It's the same God that saw you. 
And it's the same God is going to take you all the way. Amen. 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 Remember what he said is number one. Remember the good, remember the God. Number two, the second thing that you do when you take a look back is you remember the difficulties that God brought you through. Everybody say, remember the difficulties. Remember the hard places. See, God just told Joshua, grab some dirt from the riverbed. Soft dirt, because they crossed over on dry land. But he didn't say, grab some dirt. He said, grab some stones. Hoist them up on your shoulder. To remind you of the bondage that you were in in the land of Egypt. Because see, here's the thing. If you don't remember the difficult times, you don't remember the hardships, you're liable to go back to it. If you don't remember how awful it was in the land of Egypt, you're liable to do like the children of Israel and say, we might as well go on back. At least we had a job. At least it was paycheck to paycheck, hand to mouth. At least it was that. You've got to remember where you had difficulties. When you take a look back, this is very important. This is very important today. to remember and to, to look at the difficult moments. Don't look at it from the standpoint of, uh, you know, woe is me. I'm so sad that I went through this. Let me tell you my sad story. Boo-hoo. Tear in your beer. Got an issue. Get a tissue. Let's all go on Oprah. Every one of us could go on Oprah and tell our story. Amen? I'm not talking about it from that perspective. I'm talking about remembering the things that were difficult. Because when you get to where you're going, when you remember what was difficult, you will avoid getting in the same situation. You, when you remember how hard it was to get out of trouble, you won't be as prone to get into trouble. Amen. So everybody, every one of us has difficulties. My difficulties aren't your difficulties. But your difficulties aren't one another's difficulties. Somebody's difficulties could be your, uh, you, you are drawn by the boats. The boats, the ding, ding, ding. you just want to go to the boats. And it's a difficulty for you because you give them your rent money. I'm not preaching against going against the boats because if, if, you, if you don't lose your rent money, maybe, and, you know, I'm, I'm neither here, neither for nor again, okay? But I'm just giving you an example. That could be your difficulty. Your difficulty could be the bottle. Your difficulty could be the pills. Your difficulty could be a bad relationship. You need to wash that man out of your hair once and for all. And when I talk about that man, I'm talking about the same man that keeps appearing and keeps doing the same old thing that the last one did. Woo! Wash it away. And remember what's difficult so you don't repeat they say that those don't those that do not remember history are doomed to repeat it. Because we live in cycles. Because we have a fallen nature. We have a divine nature and a fallen nature. We have an angel and a devil. And the difficulties that we've been in can be the difficulties that we end up in. Unless we don't remember how difficult, how hard, how hard those stones were, how vicious the slave owners were in Egypt. I'm speaking metaphorically, but I think you all know what I'm talking about. The way of the sinner is, the way of the transgressor is what's hard. We say, well, that, that's hard living right. It's hard living for God. No, not living for God is more difficult than for, living for God. You've got God on the inside of you that makes you want to live right. But you got to remember what's difficult. Remember what's hard. Remember the hard times. Remember the difficult places that God has brought you from. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. And don't forget for one moment how hard it was in the place where you've come from. Amen. Because you say, are we there yet? Amen. You may not be there yet, but you're on your way, baby, right? Amen. You're on your way. You're on your way. We got a word from the Lord, and I believe that. He said, it's been hard, but it's going to get easier. Amen. And I'm going to give that same word that was given to me to keep it to you. It's been hard, but it's going to get easier. Amen. It's been hard up until now, but it's going to get easier. Amen. I'm just going to walk around the room and tell different people, it's been hard, but it's going to get easier. Amen. How many believe that's good news? Amen. you got a stone on your back, but it's just to remind you that it's been hard, but it's going to get easier. Amen. 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 Number three, the third thing to remember, and all I have four, is remember this. Remember that you can't go back. Because David said, you can't go back. I love the song we sing here. I won't go back. 
I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. See, they say, you know, even scientists say that biologically we change. The cells that make up our body are different than the cells that we had seven years ago. Completely different. You are literally a new person. You're literally a new person than what you were years ago. Amen. You may have traces of the looks, but as we all know, as we age, there's some things that have transpired, happened not on Scott, but on some of us. <laughs> you, you're looking at me funny, like, no, not you, but I'm just talking about the rest of us. you got one of those immortal bodies. <laughs> you never age. But there, there are signs of what we are, but if you just even look at, look at this in a very literal sense, baby Adeline has changed in the last two months. She doesn't look the same as she did. The precious baby you got there on your lap doesn't look the same as he did when he was born. And the truth is, is that we are not our physical beings. We're inside here. Look at your neighbor right now and say, I see you in there. You're in there. But your body is going to change. This house, this temple is going to change. And this house is not going to live forever. We are a spiritual being that is having a physical experience. And the spiritual being will go on throughout the eternal ages. Be glad about to say amen. 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 I can speak about it in that way or I can talk about how many want to go to heaven? How many know that there's no more crying? No more I know it's old fashioned or new fashioned. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Your spirit goes on. It's like a woman saying on the Titanic, my heart will go on. Yes, it will. You're going to go on. But there have been changes. And in the same way that baby Adeline can't go back into the world, we can't go back to 20 years ago. We can't go back to yesterday. And what happened when they crossed the Red Sea, I mean, and they crossed the Jordan River and they brought the stones out, the waters that had received for them to cross over on dry ground came back saying, you've come this far, turn around. And you can't go back. There's nothing back there for you anyway. So when you look back, remember that you can't go back. Remember when you look back that there's no going back. Amen. Some of us have had difficult relationships. There have been probably one or two of us that have been married more than once. Uh, my we went to a wedding yesterday. It was the sixth wedding for a family member. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> and Lord Jesus, he can't go back. <laughs> but you've had relationships in the past. You've had things that have went on. and There have been good things and there have been bad things. There have been great times and hard times. There's been Wonderful times of victory, wonderful times of God coming through for you, and one and, and horrible times of of going through hardships and the difficult things that we've already talked about. But regardless of the good or the bad, the waters roll back. You can't go back. When you look back, remember that you can't go back. There's nothing back there for you. We're on a journey, and we're not about to do a U-turn. How many of you want to do that? Amen. You may have taken an exit. You may have taken. Uh, you may have stopped by the rest area on I twenty going to Dallas. But if you're going to get to Dallas, you can't turn around and come back to Longview. Amen. I'll take a better Amen in the house of the Lord. Amen. Now, for some of us, we may think, "Oh Lord, I wish I could do high school again. I wish I could. I wish I could do that over. I wish I had." The time of my children again, our children are just about grown, and we remember when they were little, and thankfully, you all keep having babies, and we keep to, we get to enjoy our, our baby time vicariously through you, and give them back when their diapers are dirty. <laughs> so we remember the wonderful, wonderful blessings that God has done for us, and we remember the difficult things, but we also know there's no one. There's no more back. We're on our journey. Man, I've only got one more. Y'all got too quiet. So I want everybody to say, oh. oh. Say, oh. oh. Say, oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Number four, the fourth thing that you remember when you look back 
as illustrated by this beautiful picture of the memorial stones, is simply this. Remember to visit the past, but don't stay there. Don't stay there. So in our recollection, in our remembrance, in our going back in time, in our looking up over our shoulder and seeing what the Lord has done and seeing where the Lord has brought us from and seeing the times that were hard and the victories that He did. It's great to visit. How many have ever been somewhere that it's a, you, you love visiting, but you wouldn't want to live there? Anybody that's ever been to California and you're from Texas, I can testify you probably have said for yourself, it's a great place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. No slam on anybody from California. Amen. There are places, there are things in your life that you know, okay, this is a good place to look back, to recollect, to remember. But I'm not going to stay in this place too long. Because what happens, number one, first thing that happens if you do stay where you're supposed to be visiting, is you'll either get caught up in the good things of the past and try to recreate something that can't be recreated. That's right. Amen. I was raised in church. And our church was, we had a good church. There was a lot of family members, kind of like us. We're not blood, but it was a lot of blood. There's a lot of family. But how many feel like family? Amen. 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 And that's what we're at. We're all family. Yeah, we're just family. Came to this family. So it was that kind of church, and we had good times. I mean, uh, for some of my Baptist, Episcopalian, Presbyterian, Methodist folks, I know that you won't probably understand this, but there was a lot of rolling, running, and jumping. A lot of hair getting chicken down. <laughs> yeah, my big hands were on the floor. They were one of those back, back and fans. We went to a lot of back and fans. <laughs> Had to go through and pick them up. <laughs> and uh, a lot of singing, a lot of praying, and a lot of Holy Ghost moves. Just do that, right? I mean, well, you can just feel it. And I love that. I love it. But I'm not going to create that old time revival hour. I'm not. I'm not trying to make this what that was. Amen. Because time has marched on. And whatever the Lord wants to do is fine with me. However He blesses me, I'll be satisfied. Whatever it looks like, it doesn't matter to me. I don't care. I've got my eyes on the horizon for what He wants to do. So I visit every once in a while the memories of the past, and I'll talk to my cousins. You remember when Sister Hoot did a run around the church and, and scream real loud, scare everybody? And we'll laugh about it, and we'll have a good time about it. Please, don't run around the church and scare everybody today. <laughs> no, if you screw it, hit you, go ahead. So I'm like, we'll do it. I wish Emma were here. I said, I need a runner. She'd run for me. No more Pacific Emma. Remember to visit the past, but don't stay there. Time moves on. Amen. That's right. In fact, you have this moment. Right here, right now. This is a precious thing. It's a gift from God. Amen. That's why it's called the present. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's the present. It's the gift of God. It's life in you. Yeah. And the relationships that you have right now are precious. So, while you may mourn those have, who have moved on to their eternal reward, or you mourn relationships that were lost, maybe through no fault of your own, or just because of circumstances. How many know that life just happens? How many of those things just happen sometimes? You don't mean for it to happen. You don't want it to happen, but it just happens. And you visit the fact that that happened. And my soul ached over it. I hurt over it. And I remember it was a hard thing, but I remember that God brought me through. And I remember the wonderful things about that situation, that person, whatever. And I'm going to visit there, but I'm not going to stay there. Because my life is in the present. Who do I have right now? What do I have right now? Where am I going? Where, where, where are, am I there yet? Am I in the place of wholeness or healing or the victory that God wants to, to bring about? And if I'm not, is it because possibly I'm living in a place where I'm just supposed to visit? I'm just supposed to remember every once in a while. 
How many would be honest with me today that every once in a while you'll get a little uh, melancholy? You'll get a little melancholy with uh, thoughts and feelings that you have about something that's happened. And if you allow yourself, you will spiral down the funnel into a depressed state, into a low place. And it's not a place that God designed for you. God has called you to high places. He said He's seated you together in heavenly places. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm sitting down in heaven. I'm sitting down in heaven. You didn't know you were coming to church today and sit down in heaven. You're sitting down in heaven. He's called you to a high place. He's called you to soar with the eagles, not peck with the chickens. Amen. Amen. He's called you out of darkness into His marvelous light, not back into the darkness. You can remember how bad it was. Don't ever go back. You can't go back. Bow your heads and your hearts with me just for a moment. Hope that you've got something to encourage you, you in your life. As you take a look back and remember, I want you to, in this moment of peace, to do exactly what we've talked about in this sermon. I want you to walk back through the avenues of your life. And see maybe the places that you live. See the lives that were uh, a part of your life. See the good things that God did. See the difficulties that the place, difficult places that you've been in, the hardships, the hardness. We're just visiting there just for a moment. Because the truth is, is we don't ever visit. We don't ever look back. We may become ungrateful. We may forget to say thank you. Lord, right now, I pray that you blanket your peace, your love over your congregation today. These are your children. They're your children, Lord. They belong to you, each and every one. Even those, Lord, that may be wayward right now. Even those, God, that may be just away from you, that may not have a full relationship with you, may not be talking to you every day. I'm praying, God, that you will renew them right now. Renew their minds. Bring them back. Bring them back into a conscious, conscious relationship with you. And bring them, Lord, into a higher place of living. Higher place of understanding. Raise them up. Raise them up. I pray, Lord, that each and every one of the people in this room will have crossed their Jordan. That they will have entered their promised land. But as they pull stones out of the riverbed, and as they look back, God, I pray that you remind them that you are truly and indeed a good God. If you brought them this far, you didn't bring them this far to lead them. If you brought them, Lord, this far to glorify yourself through them and to make yourself known. Lord, I thank you for doing